Welcome to Over To You. Today we look at an event which took place 75 years ago. Much has been written about the sinking of the Titanic and speculation about its contents have been widespread. And it was only recently that the wreck was found and photographed by Dr Robert Ballard. With us today is Miss Eva Hart, who lived in Ilford with her father and mother and was on the Titanic travelling to New York to their new home in Canada to start a new life. Well, Miss Hart, can we begin by asking for the reasons for your leaving this country and going across to Canada? Oh, yes, of course you may. Now, my father was a builder, as you say, in Ilford, and things weren't very good in 1911, and a friend of his, great friend of his, who had emigrated to Canada some years before, came home on holiday with great stories of the good life in Canada and the opportunity to get on so well. And within the space of one evening, my father decided to sell his business mm -hmm. and go to Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, for a seven-year-old, what yes. was life on board like? Very pleasant, because I had my father to play with, not my mother, and my father was much more inclined to spoil me than my mother. Oh, I, I thought that was wonderful. What sort of, did you, were you able to play games? Were they organised things? Oh, well, not for several years. Like we had nurseries and we had every type of game and people would look after us and, oh, it was wonderful. I thought, anyway. I assume that, as a child of seven, you were asleep at the moment of impact. Oh, I was indeed, yes. My mother was awake, of course, as I told you, and she wakened my father and uh, asked him to go up and deck and see what was the matter. And then she wakened me and I'm... I really don't know what she said to me. I'm quite sure that she didn't say the ship is sinking because it was by no means as sure as that. But she said, come along, I want you to get up, I'm going to dress you. And I snuggled down in bed and said no, and by which time my father came back from going on to deck to look and see what was the matter because the lift that went up to the boat deck was quite close to our cabin, so he wasn't gone very long. And he simply came back into the cabin and said to my mother, I want you to put this thick coat on. Now, my mother was already fully dressed. She never undressed, as I told you. Mm -hmm. And she put the, he put the sick coat on her without any argument, by which time I was quite awake. I do remember thinking how odd it was that he should put his coat on my mother. And while I was thinking about that, he wrapped a blanket round me, picked me up, and we all went up onto the boat deck. Mm -hmm. You were on which deck? E. E. Yes. And we went up onto the boat deck, where, of course, there were a lot of people about, because it was early, it was only 12 o'clock, and there were lights on, there was music playing, and there were people going about. But my father, who I feel quite sure knew an awful lot about ships, because he was a native of Hull, mm -hmm. and I'm quite sure he felt there was something wrong, so he made straight for a lifeboat and said to my mother, now, stay here and don't move. Whatever anyone says, stay right here. I'm going to see what I can find out. Now, we were on the port side of the ship, mm -hmm. and the iceberg had struck us on the starboard side of the ship. So from where we were, on the boat deck, with a high superstructure in between, we couldn't see the iceberg, no. obviously. Mm -hmm. But he went away, and oh, it was so cold, and I can remember clinging to my mother, just this blanket around my night clothes. And he came back and said that the ship had struck an iceberg, but it was perfectly all right. We got all these watertight compartments, which I don't think convinced my mother at all. <laughs> but we stood there for a while, and then he went away again, emphasising the fact that we were not to move. We stood right by a lifeboat. Mm -hmm. When he came back the second time, and don't ask me how long that was, because I don't know. <laughs> it seemed quite a while. Yes. And he came back and said they were going to launch the boat. But he said, the officer tells me that you'll be back on board for breakfast. Mm -hmm. So, because we were there, we were on the deck while many people were still sleeping, there was plenty of time for us. And my father put my mother in the lifeboat, he put me in it, he made no attempt whatever to follow. Mm -hmm. Didn't even try. And so, because we were there, as I say, because my mother was awake, we were on deck in time to get into one of the all too few lifeboats. Mm -hmm. If she'd been asleep, our cabin is situated where it was, it wouldn't have wakened her, it didn't wake other people there. 
and we would have shared the fate of the other people who got on deck too late.